Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. You know, nowadays there's tons of dogs traveling all around the world, which is great. But for those traveling with a bully breed, it might be a little bit different than say traveling with a Chihuahua. If you have a bully breed or similar, then this video is for you. For those of you who have a bully breed, we know that sometimes they can elicit certain reactions from people. Unfortunately, people out there sometimes uh, on the street, they will say certain things or act a certain way, or maybe they'll even cross the street uh, to avoid coming close to your bully. Personally, nowadays, I actually like it when people cross the street to avoid us. There's been times when people have made not so nice comments to Rocky, you know, well, not necessarily to him, but about his breed. Now, maybe if you have a bully, then maybe you've had this problem. And if you have had this problem, then I definitely feel your pain. And let me just say up front that it is, of course, no fault of the dog. Sometimes the bully breed gets a bit of an unfavorable reputation, but in the end, I think it's always how you raise the dog. Overall, I believe that going on an adventure with a bully can sometimes be a bit more challenging than, say, going on an adventure with a Cocker Spaniel or a Springer Spaniel. So what are bully breeds? Uh, well, this includes dogs such as my own, the English Bull Terrier, as well as Staffordshire Bull Terriers, Pit Bull, Bull, <laughs> Pit Bull Terriers, uh, Bull Mastiffs, English Bulldogs, Boxers, Frenchies, and I believe even Boston Terriers are included in that list as well. So they seem to have some common attributes, uh, including that of being a muscular dog, and um, which can seem imposing. Now, these dogs are all sweet dogs. They're caring, loving, and just overall wonderful companion animals. So I understand the unfair treatment that many of them receive, but traveling and adventures can be fun, so don't be put off. So, if your dog is well-behaved and well-socialized and ready for a trip, then without further ado, here are some tips that I've gathered from years of traveling with Rocky. So, research ahead of time the place slash area slash country that you're going to for any breed restrictions. Did you know that in certain countries in Europe, English Bull Terrier is actually banned? However, always check to make sure and even try to check to see if the region that you're traveling to has different rules than the country that you're in. For example, despite Spain having certain laws against some breeds and certain restrictions, uh, for example, in the Catalonia region of Spain, there could be different rules for that same breed. Certain countries could have rules on your bully breed, uh, such as carrying around insurance for the dog, uh, muzzles, um, a leash has to be a certain length. Other countries might flat out not even allow your bully breed. For example, pit bull, pit bull terriers are not actually allowed inside the UK at the moment. Number two, check hotels, cars, public transportation for any breed restriction. In America, certain hotels or bed and breakfasts have rules against certain breeds. It definitely helps to look at any of the fine prints on pet-friendly sites and uh, the pet-friendly rules section to see if they have anything against your breed. Same goes with public transport and uh, car rentals as well. They might have some rules on weight restrictions and breeds. Uh, you can always have a backup plan in case uh, the hotel or the car rental uh, says no to your dog, but checking ahead of time and maybe calling to see uh, what the rules are exactly means you can avoid uh, having to have a backup plan. Number three, know the rules. If you have a bully and you're traveling across Europe, you might actually get stopped by the authorities for your dog. Depending on which country you're in, uh, even if your dog's breed is perfectly legal. If you know your rules, you can always cite them, maybe even print out the rules and carry them around. Or just have a photo of the rules on your phone but make it clear that your dog is fine. However, sometimes the authorities will still make life hard. So, number four, carry a muzzle. Not four muzzles, sorry. <laughs> That's number four, I threw up the four a little bit late there. If you've checked the rules and it says your dog requires a muzzle, you might still get challenged, as I have. While I've shown the rules to authorities, Sometimes they still insist uh, because of different reasons. Their own prejudice toward bully breeds, or sometimes it's better to say, yes, I've got my muzzle, then maybe when you're out of sight, uh, you know, you can just simply take it off. Of course, if the rules of a certain place or public transport require a muzzle for medium to large dogs, 
then you have to carry it and you might even have to put it on your dog if the rules dictate. Number five, just a small suggestion. A little style or accessory can help your dog seem more friendly. Again, just a suggestion, but I've definitely found that either putting a bandana on my dog or in the cold months, putting a colorful jumper on him uh, can make your dog look far friendlier. People will stop and say hi to your dog or they'll smile, I think a little bit more often than if they don't wear anything. Um, for Rocky, I found uh, actually it's quite close if, if he does wear something versus uh, if he's just, you know, walking around with just a harness over him. It might make traveling a little bit easier as well if you're staying in a hotel or a B&B. &B. For me, as I said, when Rocky doesn't wear a jumper or a bandana, people of course still say hi. And a small minority, and I'm talking a very small minority, uh, might be scared of him. Maybe 10% or less of people. But I've noticed the number of people who actively want to say hi and the number of people who cross the street to avoid him is far less when he is wearing something. Not that I really care about people who walk across the streets uh, to avoid my dog, but it definitely can help if you're out and about in the city and it might make people warm up to your dog more and could little by little even change the overall perception of the breed. And uh, it might even make you some friends as well. But of course, this is just a suggestion. Uh, I think dogs are absolutely fine without any kind of uh, coat or accessory or bandana. So it's just uh, it's just maybe kind of to ease fear among people when you're traveling into the city or uh, when you're going somewhere else. Number six, just another little tip or suggestion. Uh, always project positivity even when the world around you might judge your breed. And if they do judge you or say something, uh, wherever in the world that you happen to be in, then well, <laughs> for lack of a better phrase, screw them. Live your life and enjoy your dog. Life is short. Ignore these critics who are judging a dog based off his or her appearance alone. What does that say about them? You know? Um, I learned not to really let what people think and say affect me and uh, I just enjoy my adventures. And that's what I think your dog would want anyway. I hope that helps. Um, again, just six little tips for traveling with a bully. And if you're new to this channel, I'll be putting out more content to help you travel with your dog and um, some more tips on going on outdoor adventures and visiting cafes and, and checking out more dog friendly places. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next adventure.